Fear the Walking Dead Season 7 is coming to a close, and finally we have the war between Strand and Alicia for the tower, but who won? Let's break down this episode. Finally, the war is here. It feels like years ago when Alicia laid down the gauntlet towards Strand, saying that she was bringing him to war for the tower. At last, the long-awaited tower war is here, but it wasn't as deadly as you might have imagined. This is my review and breakdown for Fear the Walking Dead Season 7, Episode 14. Rather than committing to a full-scale battle, most of the episode is dedicated to exploring Alicia Clark and Victor Strand's fractured relationship. You know, with explosions and stuff going on in the background. Strand still very much cares about her, at one point referring to her as the closest thing he has to a daughter, and outright telling her that he loves her. Alicia, on the other hand, is willing to negotiate for peace, but not forgive Strand's many lethal actions. In the end, they're too far apart ideologically to be the friends they once were. Alicia now believes in protecting life at any cost, while Strand's more pragmatic approach saves his family even if the cost is taking the lives of others. As the episode opens, Strand invites her into the tower ahead of the battle, seemingly to, Alicia puts it, wave the white flag. Daniel is also there, having pushed through the barrier so that he can find his daughter, Ophelia, who he believes is still alive. The plan, as Strand helpfully explains to Alicia, is to turn on the beacon to draw all the radioactive walkers that were once in the crater. They'll take care of Alicia's army, and she'll be trapped in the tower with him. Of course, that's not quite how it goes down. While they're both stuck in an elevator, Alicia faints, and Strand discovers she's ill. This softens his heart to the point where he's willing to turn off the beacon and save her friends as long as she stays with him for what she believes will be her final days. She agrees, but Wes... Strand's new right-hand man doesn't. Rather than turning off the beacon as Strand asks, he and the rest of the rangers basically decline the request of their leader. The team at that point is Strand and Alicia versus all of Strand's people. Daniel eventually joins the fight too after breaking out of the tower's basement and showing his badass side is still alive and well. They'll take a detour to show him that Ophelia really isn't there but Charlie is which gives Daniel a chance to be there for her in a way he wasn't able to for Ophelia. His mind clears and he remembers his biological daughter is dead. While they're in the infirmary, Strand gives Alicia some medicine to dull her pain to the point where she can keep fighting. Daniel chooses to stay with Charlie rather than fight to get to the roof, leaving Strand and Alicia to carry out the mission. It all leads to a confrontation with Wes, during which he points a gun at Alicia with the clear intent of killing her. Before she can pull the trigger, Strand uses the fancy sword he's been carrying all season to stab him in the heart, killing him. Alicia's sickened. Why would you do that, she asks. The same reason I built the tower the way I did, Strand answers. So you wouldn't have to. While an injured Daniel leaves to gather Alicia's army inside the tower before the radioactive walkers arrive, Alicia and Strand go up to the roof. They take out some of the rangers that are still shooting at her friends, but while the walkers descend, Strand, with his hand on the lever to snuff out the beacon, hesitates. You're never going to forgive me, are you? He asks. Even if I help you save everyone, the damage is already done. She tries to lunge for the lever, and they fight. She's enraged by Wes, which makes dubious logical sense as they fight. They spill gasoline all over the roof. Eventually, they stop, and Alicia uses Strand's rooftop radio broadcasting system to get a message out to the surrounding area. She tells survivors her name, that Padre is the tower, and she gives them the exact location. That seems like a great way for her mom, Madison, to swoop in and save her daughter from the radioactive walkers. Except, remember that spilled gasoline? As Alicia faints, the whole roof goes up in flames, and Strand declares that it will spread throughout the entire building. So much for the tower as a safe haven. 
This was a decent episode, but I don't understand why Alicia was so angry over Wes. For one thing, she and Wes weren't so close. If they'd ever actually had the romantic relationship that seemed like it was teased in earlier seasons, I might see why she was hurt. But as it is, the guy was obviously going to kill her. Strand saved her life. There is such a thing as someone being too far gone. And at that point, Strand used that sword. Wes was. Alicia should be able to see that. I agree with that because, you know, Wes, if he turned into a villain, he was going to kill Alicia, and then Alicia was mad at Strand for saving her life. That's just kind of bad writing, in my, in my opinion. I actually thought the scene between Daniel and Charlie was really, really good, and I loved Daniel's line in this episode, it's never too late to learn something new before he killed that ranger in the tower basement. Season 3, Daniel returned this episode, and it was awesome. We need to see more of that from Daniel, big time. Speaking of Daniel, where is Skidmark? The showrunners confirmed the cat was alive back at the end of Season 6, but we haven't seen the cute little cat since. Is he showing back up with Madison? That would be pretty cool, to be honest. Any theories about Alicia's mystery illness? I'm guessing it will be resolved before the season ends. Whether or not it's fatal and Madison shows up just in time for Alicia's final moments might depend on whether the actress wants to stay on the show, that being the actress that plays Alicia. The next episode is titled Amina. In season four, that was the name of the tape that Altia made from the footage of Madison. And Mia is also Fear's 100 episode. Might we welcome back Madison in episode 15? For the most part, I thought this was an okay episode, saved by the performances of these great actors. The actors that played Daniel, Strand, and Alicia always do a fantastic job with average material because the writing for me at times on Fear the Walking Dead is pretty bad. Season 6 I thought it was amazing. This season I don't know if it's a budget thing or what it is but the flip-flopping of characters, their decision making seems awkward, it seems not real at times. I'm a good guy, I'm a bad guy, oh no I'm good again, oh no I'm bad again. Or when Wes was going to kill Alicia, Strand steps in, saves her life and she's angry at him again and they're enemies. That's just poor writing but it's saved by the performances of these great actors. And the next episode is episode 100 so that's awesome. So I am guessing that Alicia will get to see her mom again, Madison, which she should. And I don't know if uh, Alicia is going to be killed off or not, but at least give her a scene with Madison before she goes. That would be very, very beautiful, very emotional. I just hope they nail Madison's return and the departure of Alicia, if that's happening. And also, I want to see Morgan back. He's my favorite character. He is my favorite character, so hopefully he shows up before the season ends. But guys, what's your thoughts on Fear the Walking Dead Season 7, Episode 14? Let me know your thoughts below in the comment section. Do you think the war was actually worthwhile, was actually good? Was it worth the wait? Let me know. Very, very interested. And I cannot wait to review next week's episode of Fear the Walking Dead, the 100th episode. And that's surprising. Many people thought that this series would not go past season one or two or three but here it is at 100 episodes well done to the actors the crew the directors the writers cannot wait to review that next week guys thanks for checking out this review on my channel really appreciate it and i will see you in the next video thumbs up subscribe come follow me on all the social media see you then guys